。观众朋友，大家好，这里是 ACM 门专访教育频道。Hello, everyone. My name is Jenny. Here is the ACM interview education channel. Today, we are very honored to have Principal Augusta with us. She is the principal of Lambo Academy. Welcome, Dr. Augusta. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. Yeah. And can you briefly introduce yourself first? Um, well, I'm a um, Singaporean American, if that's the case, and I've been in America for almost 40 years. I guess the the first thing I came to America here is that I'm really very uh, enthused about education. Uh, you know, in Singapore, even though it's pretty advanced uh, to get an education, you almost have to be a boy first because, you know, when you get married, you belong to the man. So when I come here, I'm really empowered and I want to do the bachelor degree, the undergrad degree, in two years. So I finished that in two years and about three weeks got hired into Hewlett Packard as a programmer analyst. From then on, well, I guess I wasn't contented. I said, well, I need to be in the management. So Hewlett Packard has this education assistant, so I got into the MBA program in nine months and then working full time in HP. And um, at night I do my MBA, so I carry a backpack in school and in front I carry my baby, my first child. So it's pretty challenging in that regard. So as soon as I graduated, they promoted me as a senior programmer analyst and I said, well, that's not management yet. And lo and behold, that was a project you need to get into, uh, what do you call, someone to do an audit. Mm -hmm. And there was five years of information of disaster recovery or condition Contingency planning needs to be, how to say, to done to be done from scratch. So I did that in two weeks. Imagine five years, everything in two weeks. Get a disaster contingency planning for the data center network programming. So since I did it in two weeks, they promoted promoted me into management, and from there on, I have 28 years in IT management, working seven years in Hewlett Packard and the others high tech companies in Fortune 500. I guess you might say that I'm like a troubleshooter. If they need me to roll out Oracle, SAP, I can do it in a short amount of time. For instance, there's a company there, uh, they wanted me to get the PeopleSoft software, but then it's a Chinese company. I said, oh my God, I couldn't even speak Chinese. I mean, I'm, I'm born in Singapore, but I'm kind of raised in Malaysia. But, but now you, you, you speak Chinese. Well, that's a miracle, because I speak a lot of Malay at that time <coughs> and English. Mm -hmm. Then later on, my dad's business brought us back to Singapore. And then I, I guess I get married at 23, then I come to America and that's how the whole story started. And you don't really use Chinese at all. And you know, that's another thing is that when I studied Chinese, when the a minute I opened my mouth, was shit and they would say, jo, 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 you know. So I could not really articulate or verbalize. Only when I came to America and had found Holy Ground Church and started learning a lot of Chinese, verbal. And then from there on, I pick up, because I have to, because translator has a lot of, I must say, garlic bread. And I have to pray to God and say, give me that anointing that I can understand. And from that, I can speak, I can understand, but I couldn't write, uh, as long as it's functional. So anyway, back to that, got into management and got into a lot of high tech. And from then, I think, even though in a corporate world, I was able to assimilate and really pull up a lot of leadership. And if you will, engineers are like kids too. You know, for example, when I hire about 100 engineers, the Indians could not really get along because they are of high blood, you know, they cannot mix with the lower class. Or a Vietnamese will come running to my office and say, Miss Director, I couldn't work with that uh, man there. I said, what? Because he called me a dog. I said, what do you mean? Because he stayed like that. And my country, it means calling me a dog. And then you see, those are the cultural differences. And from then on, I realized, understand that you have to build empathy, how to work, understanding everyone's strength. And working in that company, in one of the Chinese company, I got in and I said, what on earth God wants you to do? Because I couldn't speak, memos coming all written in English, I mean, sorry, in Chinese. But then later on, I started hiring engineers from Russia, India, Taiwan. And that whole, con that whole company got turned around. Instead of all like Chinatown employees become multiracial. Multi Some of them went to church with me. So, from then on, I can see the power of God in the hands because you're working with diversity. You're working with how people can get along from Russia using Russian terms because they're great hackers, okay? And using their strength, they can use the back end to test the code. And the Indians, they're very good, meticulously, they're more in the applications, the front end, because they can't understand English. But the Taiwanese, well, they use Chinese translation, but they're very tedious, very hardworking, so you use their strength. 
So normally, Price Waterhouse, Ernst and Young, they'll say that project will probably take maybe one and a half years, ten million dollars. But rolling out this software, hiring offshore team, labor is pretty economical. We were able to get it done in six weeks, twenty-five thousand US dollar. I mean, it was a surprise even for me too. So then you can see that again, that's another supernatural strength that you have leveraged. So then after that, after all the success factor and everything, then my own personal challenge came. Uh, my husband that time, after 23 years, decided with the dot com coming down, we folded, we lost enough money, and he left us. And I have my three children. I have a senior, uh, my aunt, that's my father's elder sister, to take care of. And for some reason, I couldn't even find another IT job. You know? And it's very hard because um, I have to support him because he said my salary is higher. And he hired a Stanford lawyer to you know, sue me to make sure I can support him. And he said that you need to continue find supporting, find an IT job that will be more than 10000 at least 10000 okay? To that if I have the job in 10000 a month salary, I'm going to support him. And I pray, I say, God, you just give me one more IT job, but less than 10000 and true enough, a job came up for an IT director job in Oakland. And it's 9900 and something dollars. That is less than 10 k So I was able to gain full custody of my three children. So I let him have that. Go and have to support him. And then I say, I need to do something. Because now this is the first time I have time. Prime time with my children. Okay. At that time, I'm very high tech. The kids are functional. Yes, I help them in the weekend. I bring them to scouting, help martial arts so that they can sustain. But after a while, I felt like I've lost that time. And from then on, using all my corporate experiences, how to work with engineers with different you know, temperaments, their skills, how to motivate them to get the project on time. With, in fact, that comes around on children, the new generation, the leaders of tomorrow. And that's where this Lambo got birth. My son, as you can see, when you go to high school, he say, well, it's so boring, you know. I say, what's so boring? Yeah, I don't know. And I realized that this is sad. Because imagine every teenager like that, they get addicted to video games. That's a no-no to me. My standards are pretty high. I say, that's a no-no. They say, I don't want to go to Oakland. Look at them. They are not, you know, not to see any cultural differences. And I felt that there must be done something. He said, if you can find me something wrong, to get out of this high school, I'll do whatever. So I did a research and I found a program and I started creating the high school, leveraging the Department of Education in the US, how to do and sustaining a program that they themselves in America has been in the country since 1975. There's not many people do it because it's not so normal. So from then on, my son said, okay, do you want to do? Just give me the highlights. You know, my son is special too. So I said, okay, two weeks. So two weeks, really touch up because he was just about ninth grade coming into 10th grade. So out of that last three years, skipping 10th grade, 11th grade, I had to compress the entire high school curriculum, English and math and all the core subjects into two weeks because he's not an attention focused uh, kid. So, and lo, he did pass. And he went to college. And I know that one of the comments is said, Mom, I think he's good. I said, why? Because all my friends are like you, so old. I said, thank you, Brian. I'm that old, right? <laughs> and uh, it's okay because, you know, they really respect all my views. You know, high school, they just talk me down. I get bullied. But that's great, you know. So that gave me a comforting feeling because I feel that this is the time that we are fanning the fire of these kids. Because he has no passion to be a scientist. I mean, although he has the potential. And he has his potential of numbers. He likes to make money, he say. He likes to do forecasting. Why do we have to force him to work until 18 or 19 years old, get all the call, and then go back to college and do the science subjects and requirement as a G? Because now he can go to whatever he wants. And he can also sell stuff, his own CPA and self learn and pass. So what the kids need nowadays is a strategy, a technique, a formula, just like in the corporate world. You want to design, invent something, you need to have a formula, a foundation. From there on, everything can be leveraged and built on. And that's what we need. The kids need to listen in school, a frequency that they can understand. Because in the public school, it's the noise. It's like noise, and they can't understand. All they say, yeah, oh, it's sleepy, it's boring. But what happens if you tune it and calibrate to what they can understand? They like math, talk that. They like game, talk with that. For example, I have a teenager. 16 years old. 
he said, um, I'm not going to go to school. Why? Because he brought an eight inch knife to school. And you know, in America, eight inch, inch, you are expelled. So the parents brought him to a private school. And when you see the record, um, sorry, you know, um, I don't think he can get into. Because they look at his records, his school records, you fail in English, you fail in math. No matter whether it's public or private, they close the door. Of course, they'll say in a very polite way, uh, you need to meet the mark. So somewhere through the word of mouth, they refer Lambo and the kid come in. And when he came in, he is very lethargic and he said he got a bad ache because of all this cross country race. And he would sleep in the school, totally. And the mom parent could not do anything. So I prayed and said, what can I do to talk to this individual? So when I say, hey, Liwai, what do you do? What's your interest? Kickboxing, you know anything about that? He said, oh yeah, as a matter of fact, I learned Hong Ka Kung Fu in Singapore. And then we started talking and we started about Wing Chun. And I started showing up my kids and how they learn different forms. And we got into excitement. We talked for literally two hours, imagine. You know, big age difference and talking to 16 year old. And I said, hey, you think you can do me a favor here? Yeah? What? Uh, let's try this work here. When we do the diagnostic, he was here at about 30%. And then the next day he came in, he started doing more work, uh, 40%. So low for the last four weeks, first two weeks, he was sleeping in my class. The last four weeks, he really put work. But my, his mom said, but he didn't do any homework at home. Are you sure he's ready? So he's as ready as can be. Okay. The last day before the state exam of the high school, he, I think he got about 70%. Now, 70 is the passing mark. So after that, when he passed the exam on, on a Saturday, Sunday I say, what would you like to be a born again Christian? What's that? Okay, you believe? And then we started saying, I say, yeah, sure. You know, after all, you know, I got four weeks of learning. I learned quite so much, you know. He won't acknowledge how much, but he said, quite so much. I said, okay, that's fine enough. He was baptized and four or five weeks later, results came out, there's 92%. I was like, whoa, this is another wake up. Then before that, the word got out and started going to Railroad Life Church. They have a big group called the Angel Love Kids. They had about 200 kids. And maybe another kid come in and they got word and say, you know, if you need help, you need dedication, customization, try that. And that's how we got. We have one kid who just cannot go to school. He has this anxiety syndrome. And um, sometimes if he can't go to school, he's getting the straight jacket. They'll tie his arms up and kind of shape him a pop pills in need to calm him down and he won't go. He was always in the room playing games. So I talked to him, this time it's about two and a half hours and he relented. He said, teach me the quick highlights. And I did just like that boy talked about four weeks, this kid gave me one week. So the same thing, first day, second, 30, 40 and uh, the last day he scored 90% and he passed. And not only that, remember a guy who's shy, doesn't interact with anyone volunteer back to Lambo for one year. He has never, he doesn't know how to order any food. Mom would always take care of that. When I asked him, oh, just cross the road, you know, I'd like you to take a CPR test. We left him there, we forgot to bring him back because he has four hours. He came back sweating and said, I did it. Well, what do you do? It's the first time I crossed the parking lot by myself. So, oh, wow, great job, you know. Hey, that's great. And he was very, like, Wow, easily, you know, that kind of thing. And we kind of not take too much attention because then you really get, you know, folded in. Then from then on, I have John. John Senior is another kid that I pair him up. Imagine a 13 year old and a 16 year old. And they have this dialogue. And, and John has this Asperger syndrome, which is another story. And they both can get along. And then started doing volunteer work. And the more they teach kids of either younger or older, the more confident they become. To get open up. So therefore now our school becomes more like a self-empowered school by the kids. In other words, they have a roster. If you need to volunteer, some kids will come early, they'll sweep the floor, vacuum, bring out some of the materials, some will be in charge of maybe helping the grade because they have an answer key and they'll arrange it. I mean it's not like I'm hiring you know maid service because I don't have money. If you don't have funding, you know we are very private, everything is based on offering. So whatever it comes. And that's how our school come up by the word of mouth. Because kids, you know, usually parents will do everything for them. And I want kids to play a game and the mom will be feeding an 11 year old watermelon. I was saying, uh uh, that won't do, you know. So here the kids help each other. Okay, I have an 11 year old teaching a 25 year old English. 
English learner because newly uh, immigrated from China. So things are like where age is not an issue. So land book get birth because we are not, it's, it's more than an odd school. Odd school is a new 21st century school that America has invested, whereby it's one first grade, second grade can merge together. We are talking of our college program that as long as the kid is willing, groomable, Okay, we don't care whether you're a fourth grader or you're 18 year old, but you're going to learn a, a curriculum called the college prep. A college prep that you can exaggerate the entire high school program in whatever time frame you want. You can go the scenic route, you can go the freeway route or local route, but you will do it according to whatever program and for interstate standards. So, not, it's just like when you learn to swim. You don't care whether it's a six feet or an eight feet pool. If you can swim, you can swim. So if you can study, you study. English is English. Mm -hmm. You don't have to study between English or not. English is second language, English is third language. That's ridiculous. So we have students coming from different countries. They come in as, you know, ESL 1, ESL 2. Our school never would want to teach ESL. You want to learn English? English is mainstream. This is America. Okay. So we have kids coming in English learner. They can bypass TOEFL. They can bypass SAT. They go directly into university. Although if they are English learner or they are unique or exceptional, we recommend two-year community college. Why? Because not only do you get a state high school diploma, you can also get our own high school, but using earning college credits very immediate. Because in other words, if you were to learn AP classes, guess what? You can transfer the, uh, and get the college credit, but you don't really have a grade. And I know that UC Berkeley, UC they say, I know you got that way, but sorry, if you want to take our program, you're going to take our lower division in UC again because you don't have a letter grade. So that gave me thinking, why are we forcing kids to spend so much time memorizing objective tests, essay questions, and preparing stress out for nine months to take a once a year AP? And they don't have passion for you know, physics or anything. Just to get you in, why don't we just get the college directly in <coughs> college credits? And that's one another uniqueness of level. And before you know it, this program becomes very flexible. You can have an on ongoing all year round program. You Sorry. <coughs> Need some water there. <coughs> Bless you. Sorry. Okay. Let's get some water. <coughs> Sorry, okay. Sorry, so, just, in a nutshell, just, mm. that's how it all got both. That means uh, you can get to class, you can get to college. You want to go directly to UC Berkeley. A lot of parents from China say you need to be a main pie to yourself. You can. You can always do it. But can your student survive once you get in? You've heard about stories where international students got into UC Berkeley for whatever reason, however miracle and everything but can they sustain? Of course, some can, but majority would find it tough because it is very competitive. And going in, you have to sustain your English and proficiency. So our program is almost like a K to 14, but without the grade level constraint. It's based on ability, skills, and knowledge. And you need to tap it. We need to empower them with self-directing using the technology to supplement, to stimulate, because special needs kids, where do they give them? They have the uniqueness. They need to translate how to study okay, to their best strength and frequency. Once they get it, they're connected. They will just soar with eagle's wings. Have you had some exceptional kids? Yes, definitely. We had one last year in the, uh, 2017. A fourth grader came. You can see a very petite guy. His name is Matthew. And he say, I want to go to college. I say, great. So how long did I wait? Now. I say, oh, okay, what would you like to be? I want to earn money. I sounded like my son at that time. Um, I said, what do you mean by earning? I want to study the economy, and I like science. I like math. Okay, I said, good. So I tested him. I gave him a diagnostic just to make sure he's there. And true enough, he does have some math in high school up to geometry one. So I said, okay, now for the high school, you need a bit of geometry two. And test him in his writing is a little bit you know, not so mature yet in terms of critical thinking. So I said, okay, we'll try that. So Jeremy came in, was nine years old. He's still a fourth grader in public school, but he transferred 
all these records over to my school. So I become his full-time school with us. So, and then we customized the program. In seven weeks, okay, he was able to write very articulated, very with critical thinking, expository essay, which you can expect a nine-year-old to do that. I mean, it's like you're waiting for another 10 years. But this kid did it in seven weeks. So uh, he passed the exam, and then I started practicing him into college placement test, which is another admission test to go to any college or university. They will test you, besides the SAT, TOEFL. There's another CPT test. And so help him to customize that, you be prepared so you know what is going on. And he passed it. So right now, as you speak, he will be graduating in his uh, probably his second year of um, community college next starting end of this school year, he'll be transferring. He likes to go to, say, Stanford. Not sure they can, to probably get financial aid. If not, his second backup is UC Berkeley. So this is what I mean by, it's not a uh, no-holds bar. It's not like an age that uh, they're too young, they do not know what to do, or they'll deprive them of social. If a kid has that passion, fan that fire. Each kid has like a pilot light in them. It's always on. Mm -hmm. You need to feed it correctly, and they were just like a cauldron of fire. They are like revived, they arise. And that is what we need the kids, because these are the future leaders. If in America, they study the Bible for English, they study arithmetic, and 12 years of their graduate go to work to get married, why are we in the 21st century limiting our students, stretching their time because they need to be mature, of course, for crime free, they need to stay in school if not to get into, you know, bad company. I understand it. But why lock down so many? If someone needs to go, let them fly. So if they can have it, you will see a lot of economy with an eye offshore. You are building our own homegrown expertise. Okay? You 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 do not need to say we're gonna do vocational to help the kids. Now, nowadays with so many brilliant talents. Bless you. <coughs> I think you I'm so sorry. Okay. Should we get a <coughs> glass of water? Uh, I don't know how, why, why that happened. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. They can cut. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry too. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So, um, where shall we start from then? Mm -hmm. Why lock them up, uh, lock them down? Uh, yes. Nowadays, in the high-tech 21st century, a lot of parents are very highly educated now. Uh, they have late marriages because they are trying to be in the success ladder. So kids coming in becomes also very intense. They, of course, they're very smart. They're also gifted in their ways. Most of them, you can see right now in America, especially in Cupertino, the Silicon Valley area, it has been uh, surveyed that one out of 35 kids are special needs kids, mm -hmm. or now we call it special education. But actually, they're not all that bad. I mean, they are just some mild, they just need to be recalibrated. And uh, the whole school district, they panic and say, oh, we have a lot. If you do not meet the public school API, you know, the performance, academics, performance indicator, you'll be pushed. The kids will be pushed together, called special ed. So even though they're not severe, they get mixed, they get fallen with other kids, they be more severe than them. So why don't we just channel and say, don't dump them in that bucket. Let give them a bucket where they can fly, they can excel. If they like computer games, use that animation, use education technology so that they can understand the frequency, learn the form, and fly with that. You want to be a gamer, so be it. We are in 21st century. Okay? And I think that way we will have less of this special ed. And we you see the teachers now we have a short a shortage of teachers because they cannot fly fast enough to accommodate, to coach these kids. Why do you need to coach them to be more special? Why don't you assimilate them, include them into the mainstream? Okay? And help them to train the others who are called typical and have this kind of collaborative peer-to-peer -peer exchange. That's where creativity comes in. I mean, come on, Albert Einstein, he has dyslexia, ADHD, and a whole bunch of other issues that we don't know. His language even words, but he's great in physicists. So that philosophy already is Not We are all not perfect. We don't have all these various skills. But if you can fan and channel one of the strengths, you're going to have a superstar. Okay? And of course, the others is just an add-on. And what are add-on for Lambo? 
We make sure that they're balanced. People say there's no social. We bring in social. We let the kids join scouting program. And that program is also we created. We have them. If they want, if they want to say, well, we want to do some, you know, dancing or kung fu, okay, that's part of the elective. So we are very flexible to customize their program. And being to get into scouting, most of them to get to the presidential uh, scouting, that means the highest rank, has to be 18 years old. We're able to nurture a lot of these kids to get into the presidential award signed by the president, let's say Bush, Clinton, Obama, probably Trump, if we have a few more here, they will endorse it. You want to get to elite colleges, Stanford, Harvard? Once they see that, you have already fulfilled the leadership and community service in that regard. If, let's say, they need uh, passion, channel with their passion of music, that can be the performance art. So we're not limited by a school, oh, we don't have teachers trained. We let the kids fan it. We acknowledge and give them the credits. They do want college credits. We, that school, our school now becomes like a middle college. It's like a bridge where they can concurrently earn a second high school diploma because they want to have more of the subject. That's why, well, because they're too young, we bridge them. Okay? So by the time they're able to transfer to a university, an elite Ivy League, maybe they're at that time about 12, 14 years old, they will stand strong. They are not what you think is just a kid. He's an adolescent, a kid with intelligence, a kid with cognitive skills, able to interact with adult students. That's and excellent. they can still do it. Yeah, most of your students enter the college at a very young age. Yes, that's true. And because they feel confident, because they do need a transitional period. You know, I mean, even those the typical kids, they need a transitional period too. But because they thought that, well, they have survived AP, they're the same. You can see the culture will be a little bit different. But of course, they are at that. Step, you know. Yeah, what other universities they went to? Well, uh, I have some. One went to Purdue, Stanford, John Hopkins, uh, UC Berkeley, a couple of them. You see San Diego, one of them is a doctor now. You see LA, these are all their Bay Area. So some coming out from the East Coast, you have one in UPenn. But now he's the financial, I guess, manager working in New York. So it's a very, I mean, I couldn't uh, lose touch with them. Every so often, they'll send me and say, hi, I'm doing well, and send me pictures, Facebook, whatever. I do have one kid, the one I mentioned early on. I know that on the anniversary when he passed, his dad donated 2000 for our school. They say, you know, I will always remember the day when my kid disabled, you know, you saved my kid, whatever, all those good words. And uh, as the anniversary, we want to sow it so that other kids can benefit. So, and that's one of the things that is very rewarding. I think that is the satisfaction that we as educators really get because the kids are bearing fruits. The kids are of value to the community. You know, you, money cannot really buy it all. I mean, I wish we had a lot of funding. I wish we had a lot of investors coming in, but we don't have the resources to really market that. As I said, all students coming in, I have not lifted a finger to, to commercialize or do any marketing. It's all just through word of mouth. Because someone sees a success factor, they see a change in the kid, they went to their own social network, word of mouth, they brought one of you, and one of you brought a few more, and that's how it multiplied. And each will come back to volunteer, or if you can, you know, usually out of ten, you hear only one or two will come back, and that's enough. That's enough because it's like another pilot light for a few more. So, and in terms of campus, our campus is one that we're not locked down. We like to do things out in the open. Uh, whereby the kids, if we have, like we have one very prestigious Bay Club, it's like a exercise gym with squash and tennis, no way that we can afford it because membership is about 1000 a month. There's no way I can afford it. But we were very, very blessed with uh, a rich parent that gave us a good discount. So kids of uh, low income was able to go to this prestigious uh, Bay Club and they're able to exercise after class and able to interact. Now, you talk about, you know, giving them a self-esteem whereby they are crowded in an environment in Chinatown, whereby they mix with gangs, and then they're given a second chance, and they go to this unique club, they can play tennis and sports. It's a big change. It's a change they touch John and some other kids. Yeah. That they can do it. If there's a way, there's a will, and the other way around. It's a deja vu or deja vu, you know, whichever way, as long as you set your mind, you're committed. Mm -hmm. The passion must flow out. And I think the kids have that. Because with that, you both and enthuse and inspire the others. 
because you are the living, walking example of the supernatural power that God has given us. Our school is the Christian day school, but we don't make it religious. The way of process teaching, yes, you can see is biblical. We are not here to punish the kids or do how what other schools might do. We're going to let them invent about what they can do. Of course, there are constraints, but those are positive reinforcement. So, in a nutshell, that's our school. Sorry if I go a bit wrong. Are there any specific Excellent. questions you'd like to ask? Excellent. Uh, do you have some special words or words of wisdom for the parents, for the kids who are interested? Well, let me put it this way. Lamu is not for everyone. That's for sure. It is a school that has no great name like Stanford. It is a school that can customize the word it says uh, too poor, Lambo. It is something that we believe that every kid can too poor, can break through, mm -hmm. can be overcome. Mm -hmm. And I feel that it is not because they're gifted or because they are slower or delayed, because they're given a chance. They're given a self-esteem that they can manage that they are empowered to do so. And in so doing, they're not doing for self, but they're doing for others. And that's what we want, serving others. Serving others with scouting, serving others with a church to bridge them so that they stay focused. They can still play games, okay? But they also know self-control, how much they can. So, words of wisdom is that if you find that your kid is getting bored, if they find, if you find that your kid is getting addiction to video games, time out. This is the time to inspire them. Okay? If they say they want to be a gamer, don't stop them and say, you have to be a doctor. No, these are the prestigious job occupations. Parents, understand what the kid wants. Give them options. My, my son chose from computer science, pharmacy, and all that. Let them play. If they have a young age, age is their advantage. They can explore, they can discover, they can make thousand and one mistakes. Let them happen. But these mistakes are facilitated. They're guarded. That's like a safety net they don't see. Okay? But they are, from the mistakes, it's not like saying learn from mistakes and move on. Learn from them and use it and fan it and leverage and build from it. So that you can improve. Because every 10,000 mistakes, you know that you're not making the same mistake. It's one with Benjamin or what someone is say that. And that's the same philosophy we are following. Okay? That's why they tune up and fine tune their prototype. So then when they move the real world, not only they stand stronger, they have a peace of mind. They know how to share with you those options. Which you think they're too young? Uh, because age is not. This 21st century, you can't limit them to those pioneer days. They have to go. So these are the generation. They are the leaders of our tomorrow. We should not handcuff them. Let them go, parents. Because they will be your dad. They will come back and thank you. But I think we are spoiling our kids too much because of technology, maybe. But why don't you use technology to their advantage and turn it around? So anyway, um, it's, all, it's not a program for everyone because it's a food in town. For them to jump, oh, their skipping rate is not good. You know, some of them will say that but it's not skipping grades. It's challenging them that the mind can take in because can you imagine nowadays even pre-K kids can they understand iPad? Why are we saying technology is not advancing? Are we that strong? No, we're not. We haven't given us a chance. We are locked down to the traditional way, the conservative way. Why don't we go the other? This is technology, this is digital age. These kids are digital natives. They're not the 19th, 20th century, they're the 21st century. We have to change our process. We have to change our mindset. Our, we are teachers not. We sit down and we tell you, read chapter one. Oh, come on. Before you say finish, they already send everyone to sleep. Do you think college students will say, let's finish every chapter? Do you think public school say, we're going to finish this whole textbook? They couldn't finish the whole textbook. Why do we say they have to go one year at a time? And yet, they could not finish the textbook. So that doesn't jive. So something is not happening. There is a gap in our system. Because that's the old traditional way. Okay? If let's say you want to write a report nowadays, do you think you're gonna write a conservative? You're gonna use Google, Google Translate. Right? We have a lot of reference, you don't have to memorize from the textbook to take a test. You just reference. That's what reference books are. You reference. You don't memorize dictionary. Okay, where's the need? It's internet. In those days, I don't have internet. Oh my god. So I don't even, but my dad was good. He bought me an encyclopedia. Not that I read that, I started referencing. That opens my mind as to what it can be. So I think doing this 40 years of, seems like a desert walk, but it's a rich walk. It's a rich walk that I 
cultivated, discovered a lot of skills. Now I feel like I'm imparting to this new generation. I may be a senior, I may be an oldie, but I felt like I'm really reju rejuvenated. I felt young like, if you will, when I work with the kids, because they're very refreshing. You know, they, they bring that life in you, even though something can be very stressful, but they are kids. Okay, we are adults. But we have to be childlike to meet their frequency and talk to that subject level. So a lot of time they feel they don't want to be micromanaged. Then let them fly, let them manage. And scouting comes into play too. Okay, that they can go outdoors. Every time I have a kid traveling 50 miles from Cupertino to our East Bay just to attend a two hour scout meeting, and then travel about 100 miles a kid, teenagers. Instead of playing cubicle games, he's going to sacrifice his day to come here. And then Sunday, we have Scout Sunday, which is called like a Sunday school, which is an enrichment. And that can be also part of their Bible study elective too. So why not? And we can also do community service. So this becomes our extracurricular where Monday to Friday, they can focus academics, they can do service, they can do projects. Most of the advancement are through project space. So that's already exactly what a common call. The design that I have it there is strange to say. They have all this 21st century, a lot of buzzwords, and all of a sudden what they are saying now, I've been doing it since 2003. So, I don't know. I don't have all these fancy words, but we are already working with practical, bearing fruits examples. Maybe starting small, but this small becomes propagated and it just propagates to everyone. I know everyone will benefit because they can see the food. They, they feel empowered. They feel that they are no longer that I can't get out of my house. I can cross the road. That kind of scenario. I want Melody that could spend five and a half months with me studying English. Now, she's very good. She's from Taiwan. The only thing is that her mom said she just could not pen. I mean, she can do all kinds of research, books all around. The minute she holds a pen, it's like, are you study essay? And then I know what she needs are the imagery. So during that, even though she had two hours, I'll give her more time, personal time. And she pledged to say, you know, Dr. Augusta, when you read, I can feel the picture. And after that, when she goes to college at 15 and a half years old, she told me, now this is a testimony. She said that, you know, the professor said, where did you learn the English? It's so like, vivid. It's so picturesque. They can feel that. Because now I can tell, she's a very emotional, artic articulated little teenager, but she just could not panic. She just need that momentum, the springboard effect. And once she was able to do it, she was able to transfer the UCLA with full scholarship. Okay, and from then on, the mom was so thrilled that they, that's where they uh, refer a lot of kids towards. And some are special, some are Asperger, ADHD, a whole bunch of acronyms you may call it, but I don't care about all these acronyms. I care that each kid, it's the Lamb of God. Each kid coming in, I will not deny. If they're serious, they're committed. If they have no money, but they're committed. If they're willing to be a peer-to-peer -peer volunteer and help another fellow student, they are a Lambo student. If you are rich and you can afford it, then help another kid who cannot afford it. And that is what it birthed from that basis. So sometimes it's month to month, like, oh, God, I don't to pay the bill for the school. But somehow, God will send someone to come. And that's how we've been sustaining for these 15 years, month to month. Excellent. That Excellent. Sorry. Yeah, that's so refreshing. And yeah, uh, so. thank you so much Not for at all. being you. with us. And um, I learned a lot. I'm sure uh, thank the audience will benefit for, for a lot. Thank you for giving us this prime time. It is very refreshing. And I hope that um, some kids, uh, some parents can be touched and they also can benefit the same benefits and the same privilege that we are able to assimilate and receive okay. in the middle of the impartation. Thank you so much, I'm Jenny. sure. Thank, thank you, you so much Thank you. for, for being with you. us. Yes, thank you.